Hey everyone, Faye here. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to completely nullify Eldritch Ultra modifiers. So I'm guessing most of you guys out there are like me, where you absolutely despise the amount of difficulty added by Eldritch Ultra modifiers to your maps. And I decided this league I was going to sit down and take a bit of a think about how we can approach this going forward. There had to be a better approach than just clicking on the modifiers that we want for our rewards and dying and complaining about it. But once I started looking into it, once I started to understand Eldritch Alters a little further, especially from the currency dimension, I started to understand that there were ways we could entirely and deterministically eliminate a very large subset of modifiers from each of the altar pools. And as a result, we would be left with such few alters, uh, alter modifiers left over that we could then tweak or rebuild our characters around these modifiers in order to pretty much completely ignore all of the downsides we're going to be uh, incurring from the alters. Now, if you watched my previous video on Eldritch Alters, you'd know that most of the rewards from the red alters come from minion rewards, whereas most of the value of blue alters come from the player rewards. And that informs the decision making that I've presented down here. We're going to get to that a little later, but for now, I want to focus on the criteria for determining which alter type. Now, the first step in this strategy, I guess you could call it, is determining which alter you're going to be playing. This criteria probably seems completely arbitrary. There is a method to my madness, and I'm going to get through that. But but now, basically, the criteria for playing red alters are that you simply need to have the Chaos Resistance cap, you need Elemental Ailment Immunity, you need an Upgraded Soul of Aberrath Pantheon, and you need 25% overcapped Cold, Lightning, and Fire Resistance. On the other hand, the criteria for blue alters is actually a lot higher. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, well, my build doesn't fit this criteria, and I play blue alters anyway, and that's totally fine. You can do that. The point of this video is more to show you how to not die. To, to all this stuff, and maybe you're just playing a really good build that gets to ignore the stuff, but I think this criteria is a very solid list of criteria if you do want to avoid dying while you're playing Blue Alters. So, let's start. You can't play any Frenzy stacking builds, Raiders, uh, some of the Frenzy Charge Tricksters, Badge of the Brotherhood Assassins, and Occultists, totally off the table. You can't do it. You get reduced uh, defenses per Frenzy Charge, and when you have 10 Frenzy Charges, you're looking at something like 300% reduced defenses. Now, it does stack additively with increased defenses, so if you have increased evasion and stuff like that on your gear, you can counteract it to some extent, but for the most part, this will just reduce your evasion uh, and your armor to zero if you're playing a Frenzy build. Okay, you can't play cast on crit and you can't play hit-based Doom Blast. The reason you can't do that is because these are two builds that rely on power charges and their main skills rely on cooldowns. Now, there is a modifier that causes you to have massively reduced cooldown recovery per power charge. These builds stack power charges, they get massively reduced cooldown recovery as a result. They can no longer use their main skill effectively and you essentially brick the map. The map is possibly completable, but it's very difficult and it's going to take you a lot longer, so you don't want to do it. Okay, next on the list, you can't play endurance endurance charge stacking. I'll explain why a bit more, uh, I'll explain a bit more on that one later, but for now, just trust me on this one. Um, elemental ailment immunity applies to blue altars as well. You do want to have some form of fizz damage taken as elemental, so stuff like lightning coil or the helm or body armor crafts, these are good options. You can't play a projectile based build if your build would not get better if you equip the Nimus. So if you're playing like a lightning arrow build that has say three projectiles and you need all three to fire in front of you, which it's a ridiculous example, but humor me, right? Um, if you equip the Nimus onto that, your projectiles are firing in random directions. They may not necessarily fire in front of you, and that's going to be a problem when you're fighting stuff like bosses or tough res. So yeah, and then also finally on blue altars, you need to overcap your lightning and your cold resistance by a whopping 85. This probably seems crazy and there is a very good reason for it. And you also need to overcap your fire res resistance by 25. So as you can see, the list of criteria for playing blue altars much, much higher than red. If you're looking at your build and you don't think you can change your build reasonably to fit that criteria, you just want to play red altars. But some of you are probably looking at your build and saying, well, I'm not playing any of the builds that are bricked, according to Blue Alters, and I do have room to overcap my resistances if I change, say, some of my jewelry, you know, my rings or my gloves or boots and stuff like that. Maybe Blue Alters are viable for you after all. Now, remember how I just pointed out how when you play Red Alters, most of the value comes from the minion rewards? This means we're going to never be taking player rewards. Now, if you think about it, you may be giving up, say, 10% of the value of your loot that comes from Eldritch Alters by never taking the player option, but there is a huge advantage here. The Red... Uh, uh, alter player options have some very, very, very brutal downsides. Downsides I would never want to experience again, and I don't think you should either, right? If you think about it, what you're, the benefit of incurring these downsides is 
not at all worth it in my opinion the tiny bit of extra player point doesn't make up for having a meteor fire at you pretty much every time you use a flask or taking 600 chaos damage per second which is a brutal dot even if you're playing a build with chaos resistance and permanent life regen so basically when you play red altars never take the player reward option you always take the minion reward option if it's offered and as for the boss rewards i have to explain this in more detail later on but basically don't Take the boss rewards unless you are unless you have a really 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 good build i'm talking like 10 to 15 million dps uh single target that's the kind of level you want if you want to take boss rewards because some of the boss mods will make the bosses considerably difficult and that can be a problem for you okay and finally if there are no minion reward options it's a very good idea to just skip the altar once upon a time wrath of the cosmos rewarded you for clicking every altar possible but there's no such mechanic anymore. There's no reason to be clicking these altars and the extra Eldritch mobs that spawn from an Eldritch altar cannot spawn more Eldritch altars I've learned. So there's no real benefit to doing it uh, unless you just want one extra Eldritch pack, but I don't think given the downsides, it's worth it. Now, also you might recall Blue has an entirely different dynamic going on. When we play Blue altars, we only really want the player rewards and we don't want the minion rewards. If you look at the pool of rewards you can get from Blues, you're looking at things like jewels, fusings, chromes, scours, alts, blessed orbs, etc. And when they drop in stacks of one and you have to move your character for each time this item drops, it's really not worth it. It slows your map down way, way, way too much, in my opinion. So when we play blue altars, we're going to scan for like the divine, the exalted orb options. And if that's not there, we're taking the player option. If there's no player option, you're skipping blue altars, in my opinion. You can take the boss reward or the minion rewards, but I just don't think it's worth it. I think like outside of the jackpot items, the best case scenario is just not even worth looting and definitely not worth the added level of difficulty. We're already going to be doing a lot to deal with the downsides of the player option. We don't want to have to then deal with the downsides of the minion and boss options as well, because that requires putting in so much extra work that we're already putting on top of what we have to do when we play red altars. What you're seeing here are the only 10 Eldritch Alter modifiers that will ever affect your character again if you decide you're going to be playing Red Alters from now on. So we're ignoring all the player downsides now, and we're also going to be ignoring the boss downsides, but it's handy to know that the boss downsides are the exact same modifiers as the, as the minion ones for the most part. They're just going to be on a much stronger enemy. They may affect you a little differently, but as I explain each one individually, I'll explain how they apply to bosses. So drops burning ground on death lasting three seconds. This one is a very, very, very dangerous modifier, but all we have to do is upgrade our minor soul of Abrath Pantheon, and it gives us complete immunity to burning ground. So once we get this Pantheon upgraded, we're done. We now have to worry about this modifier ever again. The next one is Consecrated Ground on Death. This one can just be ignored entirely. It generates after all of the minions are dead. There are no minions left to benefit from the healing from the Consecrated Ground. So obviously this one's just free. Now, this next one is the first one that we actually have to deal with properly. It's something that you wouldn't be doing passively probably if, you, if I don't tell you. So gain 140 to 260% of physical damage as extra damage of a random element. This is pretty brutal. And it also inflicts cold, fire, and lightning exposure on hit. <laughs> now, exposure was buffed this league uh, up to 25%. So you need to now overcap all of your resistances by 25%. You should actually be doing this anyway on all builds, regardless of whether you play with Eldritch Altars, because uh, I believe ne the Nemesis modifier rework put the exposure at the highest weighting currently on, on patch 320 and that exposure modifier is 25% as well. So if you have 75% elemental resistances and you cop an exposure, you're down to 50% resistance. And this means that rather than taking only 25% of the elemental damage, you're taking now 50% of it, or in other words, exposure doubles the amount of the elemental damage you take, but it's very solvable. You just get 25% overcapped elemental resistance. So rather, you know, you basically just have 100 fire res on your character and in brackets, it will show that you're over the cap and that's fine. Exposure hits, it reduces it from 100 down to 75, you're still a cap. And as for the extra fears as elemental, this just comes down to having a, a well-rounded beast of a character, I guess you would say, where you are sufficiently investing in all of your defenses, you have a nice life pool, you have forms of recovery as well. This stuff won't be a problem providing your character, you know, is sitting around between, say, 70 to 100 E. EHP and has a good amount of damage and movement speed. Okay, this next modifier where you'll use flask charges, in my opinion, just ignore it. It doesn't really do much. You kill the mobs too fast for this to really matter most of the time. The next mod, the next one is kind of dangerous, but only when it goes on bosses. So 20 to maximum fire and chaos res and 160 to regular fire 
and Chaos Rose. Now what this basically means is that the enemy is going to then be sitting at 95% firing Chaos Res with 65% overcapped resistance. Now the problem with the overcapped resistance here is that your Despair, Flammability, Elemental Weakness, all those curses, Exposure, things that reduce resistance will reduce the 65 overcap. So you better be playing like an, el an Elementalist that's stacking the Juiced Up Exposure with juiced up time ability and elemental weakness at the same time if you want to eat into this cap but a better way to deal with it is just through penetration so if you're playing a fire hit based build you can just run the fire penetration gem in your gear pob may show it as a small dps downgrade but if you want to kill the bosses it's worth doing so if you have 45 percent penetration this is going to reduce the enemy's fire res from 95 to 40 uh, to 50 sorry and this means that rather than dealing 1 20th of your damage you're only dealing one half of your damage it's reducing like 90 percent of the difficulty added by this modifier it's only relevant though when you're versing bosses when you're versing minions it doesn't really matter it, they still die pretty fast okay next one 100,000 to armor. This could just be ignored, in my opinion. If you're playing a Fizz build, you're probably playing with a lot of Overwhelm physical damage reduction anyway, and not a lot of Fizz builds are even popular right now. I can't even name a single pure Fizz build off the top of my head. I figure some will end up being popular thanks to Spell and Pale and Gloves now, but for now, I just don't think this one uh, is very important. It is a problem if you if you get it on a boss. Again, you know, just run the overwhelm physical damage reduction and deal with it. Make sure you have 12 to 15 million DPS if you want to be doing the boss altars. Okay, next ones. Increase the area of effect. Doesn't matter at all. Up to a thousand percent increased evasion. Now, this one does it does it's not nearly as bad as it sounds, basically. So I calculated it uh using my evasion calculator, and it turns out that if you're at the accuracy cap and an enemy has the average evasion of around uh eight thousand one hundred and i think 60 or 20 and then they gain a thousand percent increased evasion I, that only brings them to an evasion a rate of i think like 40 percent it's it's not not that bad at all it sounds a lot worse than it is so your hit chance goes down from like 100 to 60 percent it's really not that bad okay and the last two are physical damage as extra chaos now this is balanced at the same level as elemental damage which means you don't need to have your capped Chaos Res. You need 75 Chaos Res in order for this not to just completely destroy your character. And after that, Fizz is extra fire damage. Nothing you can really do here. Just have a nice tanky character that can deal with damage all of the normal ways. Now, having evasion, spell suppression, things like Enfeeble or Fortify, all this stuff helps to mitigate this kind of damage, and that's all you need. Blue Altars are a little more complex, but not by that much. So to start off with minus 60 to Cold and Lightning Res. Now, when you are dealing with blue altars, you need to overcap your cold and lightning res by 85. The reason for this is that if a rare monster applies exposure to you while you have this modifier, you're going to be at minus 85 cold and lightning res. So you just need to add 85 on top of your 75 and overcap it and you're good to go. After that, there is the modifier for additional physical damage reduction. Now this one sucks because it cuts into your uh, physical damage reduction from armor and endurance charges. But there is a way around it. You can convert physical damage taken to elemental damage through things such as Lightning Coil, the Cloak of Flame, Pyroshock Clasp. You can get two modifiers on a helmet and you can get a double veiled modifier on a body armor. There are a lot of really effective ways of dealing with this problem. You don't need to convert all the physical damage. You just need to convert a bit of it and that functions as pseudo mitigation. Uh, and it counteracts the effect of this, right? But this modifier does not mean not to run armor. So I have seen some people suggest that just dropping all of the armor from your build is a way to deal with this, and that's not true at all because it's not reducing your armor. It's only reducing your physical damage reduction. That means that if you are stacking armor, you're still getting a lot of value out of having molten shell. And if you do have high enough armor on small hits, minus 60 is not enough to reduce your mitigation to zero. So it's still going to be pretty good in my opinion. All right, next up is enemies drop shield and shock, shock to ground. And then even after that, there are enemy, uh, all damage from hits can sap you, a uh, chance to be sapped when hit, non-damaging ailments who inflict are reflected back to you. Now, all four of these modifiers, you can totally immune them just by having regular elemental ailment immunity and lots of ways to accomplish that. Purity of elements, storm shroud, etc. Not going to go into it because it's very basic. Okay, after that, nearby enemies gain 100% of their physical damage as extra cold and extra lightning. Now, you may have noticed similar modifiers at the bottom of red. So if you look at the bottom of red, gain uh, fizz is extra chaos, gain fizz is extra fire. These are very different modifiers to the ones that, that appear on the blue mods. So because these are global modifiers, this and this will affect pretty much all mobs in the map. So when you're playing like Delhi maps and you, you spawn a Kosis or an Omnophobia or whatever, they are gaining this this buff but whereas if you're doing it on red altars they don't gain that buff it's only the eldritch minion packs so 
This is way more brutal than the red versions, even though they're at lower values. And you have to deal with this by basically just, again, the well-rounded beast. Have a nice character. Have an adequate amount of all forms of mitigation that you need. You know, evasion, spell suppression. Make sure you're adding in something extra. So if your build doesn't have access to things like Fortifier or Enfeeble, you actually want to seriously consider putting in Eternal Damnation or Divine Flesh or something like that, right? You, you really need to deal with this. Um, but that's all you need to do to deal with it. Okay, after that, we just have to talk about the prohibit prohibitive um, modifies that kind of brick builds because I experienced this firsthand and it's very brutal and I feel like a lot of people should just be aware of this. So, reduce defenses per frenzy charge. This one stacks additively with increased defenses from your gear and from your tree, but if you're playing a raider, a trickster, an assassin, or an occultist that's stacking frenzy charges, don't do it. <laughs> just don't do it. Uh, I, I think blue altars are just unplayable for builds that are stacking frenzy charges. I spent my league start playing a lot of blue altars on my radar. I eventually switched to red, and it wasn't just because I thought red was be uh, better in terms of rewards at the time, it was because I was so sick of this modifier. Now, next up, reduce recovery rate of life, mana, and energy shield per endurance charge. This is really brutal because it affects every type of recovery. And if you're stacking endurance charges, well, you may as well just leave the map at that point. So if you're playing anything that stacks endurance charges, just don't play blue altars. If you're playing a power charge build that's using a cooldown based main skill, and uh, you don't want to play blue altars either. <laughs> now, reduce cooldown recovery rate per power charge, way more brutal than it actually sounds. I can't play blue altars on impending doom as a result of this one modifier. It, you just it reduces the cooldown by way 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 too much uh it's i just leave the map every time i pick it up and cost of crit is a lot worse because your trigger rate just goes down abysmally at that point so yeah if you're playing custom crit or impending doom hit base you cannot play blue altars finally projectiles are fired in random directions a lot of people say hey free nimus well guess what a lot of builds don't actually want nimus so i think i already gave this example earlier on but like with the lightning arrow with three projectiles going forward if they start going you know shooting up behind you for example you can't damage the thing in front of you you're dead so don't play builds that are gonna get bricked by this modifier and don't think to yourself hey free nimus that's pog because it's not it's dog i'm gonna put this in the description of the video uh below and you can access it whenever you want i know for me i'm personally going to be referring back to this information myself every time I build a character from now on. Every time I make a build guide or make any type of new character, I'm going to know ahead of time whether I'm going to be playing red or blue altars. I'm going to look at the things I need to do in order to nullify those modifiers, and then I'm going to build the character accordingly. And, you know, if I want to play blue altars, I'm going to make sure that character has 85% over capped cold or lightning res at all times to deal with these problems so that I don't start incurring these random one shots and become frustrated by it. Eldritch Alter modifiers, they're actually not nearly as hard as I previously thought they were, and I, I am very glad that I can share that information with other people because it's one of the biggest complaints I hear League after League, people complaining that altars just make your maps feel like they're not fun anymore, and honestly, altars aren't that bad. We just didn't really take the time to understand them or to understand how we could avoid certain types of difficulty from the altars without actually penalizing the amount of loot we're earning by very much at all. This entire strat can be pretty much summarized by removing most of the difficulty, but almost none of the loot. But if you do everything I've, I've told you in this video, you're going to have a much easier time with Eldritch Altars going forward. You're not really going to notice the, the difference to your loot per hour, though, and that's what's exciting to me. I hate having to give up loot in order to reduce the difficulty of the content, and this is the best of both worlds. You can still get, get most of the loot from an altar type without getting most of the difficulty. I think that's a win-win, and I'm really glad I can share this with you guys. Now, it's come to my attention that a whopping 420% of you freeloaders are not subscribed to this channel. That means you're not contributing that much to my chocolate milk funds, and that makes me very disappointed. So if you liked this video, please give me a subscribe. If you didn't like this video, please give me a subscribe anyway, because I'm an addict and I have problems.